All of the Monk S is in order around Maumu. Now, as we start to send some teams home, some teams really probably weren't expecting to pack their suitcases this early, but that's what happens when you catch a couple L's. But here we have two more teams that are trying to avoid the L status. That's going to be G2 and Fnatic. You can see them getting set up right properly here as we look at another elimination matchup. Mind you that, again, this is a big matchup in a big way here on home soil for Fnatic and their side. G2 having proven their worth yesterday as being a day zero team, meaning that when they came in here, they just got their party started. My name's Trey Sarantis, and welcome back, everybody. I want to tell everybody, while I introduce these two, being Jacob Benicke and Christine Chi, that it, Esports, the Finnish esports organization from Finland, has been eliminated from the Corsair DreamHack Masters. Adios. See you later. Not again, huh? Another disappointing tournament for Ents. I know they're coming into to this tournament stint, you know, without any practice. They, they even said it themselves in interviews that we do not expect too much because we haven't really had time to practice with Sunny. But three in a row now, three disappointing tournaments yeah. in a row, especially considering that were they to win the game against Furia, they would have faced the winner of this game, which is Fnatic and G2. And that would have been a relatively easy way into the playoff compared to the other group. I suppose. Christine, look at this bracket. Tell me something that sticks out to you. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> it's certainly got to be that uh, this this Envy versus uh, Furia matchup, and then leading into this Ens Furia. I think Furia. I mean, I know that Ens is is underwhelming coming into this tournament, but Furia coming in with Henny, they they have a newfound uh, uh, teamwork, and I mean, Art. Thinking back in his performance, there always has been sort of that disconnect from his aggression and the rest of his team. And I think they're starting to formulate some sort of a, a good plan on the on Furious side of things. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how that team develops. We obviously know the skill level that, that Henny can play at. Now, what can he bring to the table for them and how far can they go into this tournament? That'll be the big question. However, my big question now is what are your three reasons about the game that we have at hand? That being G2 and Fnatic, that's what's coming up in the cards, Jacob. Well, I got you with three reasons why I think this is, could be be a fun and a messy game. Uh, I, I think it's it's going to be one of those that that it's hard to quantify. It's hard to, to put a finger on where is it going to go, right? The first reason is obviously the fact that we have a team coming into this one with roster changes. In fact, both teams having roster changes coming into this one. Fnatic brought in Brolin, not Brolin, sorry, they brought in Flusher and they brought in Golden again to this lineup, so they haven't had a lot of time to practice either. Whereas for G2, as we said before, they met each other yesterday, which leads to the second reason, lack of practice for G2. There's been zero practice whatsoever. We heard yesterday in the interview with Nexa that they agreed the spots, they talked about what the spots were called and all that kind of stuff yesterday. So basically, as you said, Trace, a day zero team. Yet, they were still pretty impressive yesterday. Now, the third reason why I think this could be funny and messy at the same time is that we we're watching Fnatic, it's always been a messy team. It's always been a team that's fun to watch because it doesn't always make sense. When you see JW on the server, he's always going to fly around. He's always going to do some sort of, you know, weird play sometimes. It makes sense as his mind, I'm sure. But when you're watching Fnatic, it's always messy, but it's almost always fun as well. You have to do something strange for a little piece of change from time to time. Isn't that right, Jacob? I totally get it. It's, it's completely right, Trace. Yeah. Speaking of strange, I've got fun with Frankie and Flusha. Check this out. <laughs> It's not about winning, it's about fun! I'm not prepared for this. Is it nice being back? Yeah, it's nice yeah. playing with some of my best friends, so... Yeah. Uh, all good there. Yeah. Where do you think we're going? Are we going in a hot air balloon? That would be cool, but in this weather? Oh, here we go. It's very nondescript, am the gonna, building. Am I going to bake? <laughs> bake a cake? He's cleverer than he looks, you know. <laughs> we should make some treats for the boys. Yeah, we can. Yeah, do they deserve treats? Have they been practicing hard? Oh, uh, yeah, I think they deserve some. OK. We're going to make some chocolate balls. Mm -hmm. Some Swedish chocolate balls. Some hookah baller. Is that what they're called? Hookah baller. Hookah. Hookah baller. <laughs> Perfect. Who club baller? <laughs> you achieved so much with Fnatic, won three majors, but then you, you went off for a while, you went to Cloud9, and then you obviously had your break, but now you're back. So what's it like to be in the Fnatic jersey once more? Like mainly it's coming back to um, Crims and uh, JW, of course. I've played with them pretty much all my career, and. Uh, we are really good friends, both outside the game, inside the game. Like uh, whatever we do, we we always have like 
our backs and uh, yeah, they're just some of my best friends and we all get along just perfectly, so. So you kickstarted your career with Fnatic, became a legend with them, and then you went across to America. So how different was it to be playing with Cloud9 and on that scene? Uh, a whole new world in, in mm. one way. Basically came there, I didn't know anyone or except uh, Mike Golden, uh, but he uh, unfortunately had some health issues after, after a while. So it was kind of just meeting a lot of new people. Everyone uh, was just really nice and uh, the whole C9 management and everything, like everything was really good there. Uh, I got taken care of really well, so. Does someone take a picture of me for Tinder? When me and my boyfriend break up. So you're essentially playing with the same lineup that you won Intellect Dream Masters Katowice with in 2018. But instead of Lecro, you've got Brolin. Very young, new Counter-Strike player. So how are you working with him and, and building up that in-game relationship? Known him for like three weeks now, like apart from the, the one tournament we played together with him in, uh, I don't know, two years ago soon. So um, I haven't gotten to know him uh, really well yet, but uh, we're getting there. <laughs> Does that leave enough space for milk? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> A lot of revealing stuff in that segment, some of which by Flusha, some of which by Frankie, but it was all very fun. And that's what it's all about around here at the Corsair DreamHack Masters. Now, what is going on here? Frank or Z coming in hot. What do you have? Oh. Uh, no. Did you bring tea for us as well? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Oh my gosh. Trace, Thank why you. don't you go ahead and uh, taste it? And yeah, no. put the balls in your mouth, right Trace. <laughs> do as the lady says. Let's take a look. Um, I, the balls these aren't going to eat themselves, these I suppose. These are ones. Trace. Okay. These are my ones. Trace, just oh, take I a bowl, yours. put it in your mouth, and, okay, and see where it leads you. Jacob, take one of Flush's balls. Yeah, I'm on a diet, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> it's not hey, Trace. Hey, Trace. Hey, Trace. Yeah. How is it? Mm. It tastes like oatmeal covered with for chocolate Thank you, milk Frank. powder. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. I can't really talk now. But if I do, I'm going to look really ridiculous. So, well, anyway, thank changed, you for the surprise. Huh? It's actually getting better the longer Swallow it's been it, up. Hurry. Or can't. Um, let's move forward and talk about this game a little bit with G2 and Fnatic. So somebody talk, anybody but me. Yeah, sure, let's let's talk. You guys are fully occupied with stuff in your mouth. Um, G2 is an interesting team, right? There's a lot of stuff going on with that lineup right now. As we talked about before, they are a new lineup just being brought together. They have Nexa joining the lineup, being the new in-game leader, being the guy that is supposed to form this lineup for the future. They brought in Hunter as well, his camarade from Crazy. So I think there's a lot of fun stuff going around in that camp, and that could be interesting to see how they're going to fare against a team like Fnatic who is, as said, a messy and very explosive Counter-Strike team. What about, like, uh, no, sorry, I, I hate to cut you off. We do have to do this veto thing. <laughs> yes, so, let's like, do this veto like, thing. Real quick, let's get yeah. these maps in there. No let's more Keck Ws, no more any of that. <laughs> what do we have for maps? Well, I mean, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see which one of these teams ver veto Vertigo first, because yesterday both of them ended up vetoing Vertigo first, and I know Fnatic have not had enough time to even visit that map sure. being so new, but all of the G2 players actually, when they were on Crazy or when they were on G2, they played Vertigo. Sure. So Although they vetoed it first yesterday, I think they, it could be a pocket pick for them coming into here, or they're just going to have to veto Mirage first. I'm going to counter you and say there's no way they're going to pick Vertigo, simply down to the reason that Vertigo is such a new map that mm. despite both of them have played it before in their previous teams, the spots, they don't even know what to call them, right? Because when we figure out new spots for a new map within Denmark, we, we sort of like make up our own spot names. So I'm pretty sure that will be too big of a gamble, but it would be fun to see. I will agree with that. That being said, though, I think Fnatic did the right thing here, removing it. There's no need to risk it, uh, and, and neither for G2, there's no need risking picking it. Now, I would be surprised if we don't see a Dust 2 in the mix here, a map that both teams fancy to play. Yeah, I mean, historically speaking, G2 would have no problem picking up a, a Dust 2, right? No. For sure, and I mean, Fnatic, they had such a close game yesterday versus Tai Lu in that last game of the match, losing Dust 2, 13-16, actually, and they didn't look very comfortable on that Dust 2, so if uh, if G2 picked Dust 2, it's going to be actually Ooh. a pretty strong pick for them. Inferno from and it. Train. Okay. That's where we're going to start our series, at least on Inferno. Picked by that of Fnatic, and that would leave G2 to pick Train. Where are we going for a third? 
does too, I would say, would be a, a really good pick for G2. I could see Overpass being in the mix there as well. Uh, don't really know where it's, it's going to go. I'm, I'm surprised that D2 didn't go for, for Dust2. I think Train is, is a map they obviously can play. We know that Kinyas is a great op on that map. We know Nexa in particular have done some great calling on that one. Now we do get Dust2 as a third map, and I think G2 is going to be very happy with that, whereas for Fnatic, it's probably all right as well. But Moving back to the point I, I was trying to make about Train, I, th I think it's interesting, right? I think it's one of those maps that you need a lot of synergy as a team. You need a lot of team play if you want to really be good at it. So I think Fnatic got an opening in this one, considering that D2 are, you know, favorites by the odds at least. And speaking a little bit more about uh, the IGL in-game leader role of Nexa taking it over, I'm really excited to see Omnic and his transition going back into just being a regular player. Mm. I know that in the beginning of 2019, coming into this year, uh, he was actually having just an explosive start to this year with this G2 lineup, really being just the star of this team. And when you look at this lineup, you don't think Omnic firsthand, but yeah, he was the front hand man. He was the person in the front doing all the work. And then he kind of went into that IGL role and kind of quieted it down over the summer. And now, I mean, I'm excited to see how he transitions back into that role. So G2 comes in here, right? And they make it competitive against Astralis. Yeah. Which is, I guess, further than expectations. You know, that that's pretty good. That's not bad considering you are zero days old. But now we can focus on what a player is within this lineup that's been there pretty much the entire time. And that would have to be Kenny S. That would have to be where we center our attention because, to be completely honest, he is a pretty big cornerstone of this lineup. He absolutely is. And I mean, Kenny S has had such an amazing career thus far. And although he has been a little bit more quiet in the past couple of years, he's still got it, man. And he's been talking about it in his interviews about him himself having to evolve and having to transition into a different style of opera, specifically after that uh, nerf from the op. And he's just been transitioning and he's been looking better and better. And I mean, look at this clutch with this rifle, just his movement and his decision making and quick reactions is so impressive. And he wins this 1v2 clutch and he makes it look easy. I would like Kenyas to throw all that out of the window and go back to the Kenyas we knew him to be two years ago, three years ago. I think he's focusing too much on being a good teammate. I think he's focusing too much on, on basically being fit for the team and, and being a great teammate in that essence. When you have so much skills as the Kenyas have, when you are one of the best AWP players in the world, and when you can be the best AWP player in the world, if you're motivated, then try not to focus too much on being a good teammate. Obviously, it's nice if you're a good communicator. Obviously, it's nice if you're there for the team when need to be, but set yourself up for success. This is going to be the guy that's going to elevate G2 from just being a top 10 team to potentially be in the top five and fight for that spot. So I know Kinez is a great guy. I know he's been focusing a lot on the team aspect of the game, but try to stay away from that just a little bit and go back into beast mode, which is where we all love to see him to be. Which he couldn't have done had he not set his hair the right way right there. We have to acknowledge <laughs> the fact that there, there is attention to detail there from Kinez and also acknowledge that Fnatic on the other side is a worthy adversary. They did catch a, they did catch a loss early earlier on in this tournament, but uh, they bounced back last night, knocking Tai Lu out. Now they find themselves back here in the hot seat. They did, and I mean, we had such a good series coming out of Flusha yesterday. I know we discussed Flusha coming back, this being his first LAN debut since February back in Katowice. So uh, I was a little bit concerned about his form coming back into this tournament, but I mean, we saw his form coming in, and really, Flusha doesn't need to have the best mechanics. He's such a cerebral player. He sets himself up in those positions that allows him to get the quote-unquote easier kills. And we saw that yesterday, actually. He had so numerous flanks, numerous multi-kills being rewarded from those uh, proactive movements. I am super worried on the behalf of Fnatic right now. I don't think they're playing up to the level that we can expect the team of this caliber to be at. We have Crimson in the lineup. He is arguably one of the best support rifle players in the world. And I say support in the sense that he is a strong rifle player. He gets a lot of cracks, but he's not really the guy that is too aggressive in the way he's playing. He's playing laid back and he's so, so good at being a defensive, aggressive rifle player, if you, you can say it that way. You see it right here on your screen as well. Now, the problem for me with this Fnatic lineup is yesterday they're playing against Tai Lu, a team that has done absolutely nothing nothing as of lately. they played some of the worst Counter-Strike I've ever seen come out of Tai Lu, yet they were still close to lose to them yesterday. They lost Inferno, which is now their map pick going in against T2. There's a lot of uh, red alarms in my head right now in regards to this Fnatic lineup. Now for the future though, I think this could be a project that could go a long way. They have the talent, they have Brolin on the lineup as well. A young guy with a, a bright future hopefully, but for now against T2, with all this motivation, with all these changes coming in, I am worried on the behalf of Fnatic. So we've got a head-to-head -head comparison here between some oppers. Now the map pool that we have is Inferno Train Dust 2. How big of an op impact are we going to expect out of these two? 
I mean, Inferno Train Dust 2 all through these map are very viable for the op. And I mean, we're expecting to see ops, double ops coming out and even scouts. And I mean, of course, the SGs. I mean, JW had a great day yesterday. Despite them losing to Ents, he was playing very well against them on Mirage. It was a 16-7 deficit, so there was not a lot of stuff he could have done by himself, but he had a great game. Same goes on against Tai Lu. He was one of the, the, the better performing players, they I say, especially on the third map being Dust2. So JW is feeling it on an individual level. Whereas for Kenny, as we talked about him, I think he's a player that needs a, a certain amount of freedom, but also needs a certain system around him in order to really function well. So I think it's a little bit too early for Kenny to expect to go back to beast mode, whereas for JW, JW, we know he thrives when everything is just chaos. Let's do this real quickly. We're going to start with you, Jacob. Give me like one, maybe two sentences max about who's going to win this game. I think it's a really hard one. I, I'm going to say G2 just because I think that would be fun, especially considering the future. I think they need a good experience there. And I, personally speaking, I think it's a 50-50 game. It could go both ways, but uh, let's go with G2. Okay. Christine? I'm also going to go with G2 on this one. I think Fnatic, Jacob, you're right. They are stuck a little bit in the past. Yesterday we saw a disconnect from their players, so I'm going to go with G2 on this one. You know what? I think I'm also going to have to go with G2 okay. because, well, there's just too much <laughs> W and not enough mouse one over on the side of Fnatic. Unfortunately, that's the story that I'm getting at least. And now, the time that you've all been waiting for, analysts stop talk and start match, which is exactly what we're going to do as we bring in two new commentators. Look at these guys in their panda outfits or whatever. Analysts stop talk, casters start yell. Hey, Mo, Hello, right. gentlemen. Take it away, yeah. Momo. We're ready now? Yeah, we're into it. This is unusual. I, I don't. I don't. This. I don't feel nearly as confident as I did going into this situation. No. I mean, I, we started this joke like 15 minutes ago, and it's already really, really warm. And <laughs> but now I didn't want to take it off. But I, I regretted this about 10 minutes ago, and it's been just, just been waiting here. Well, I'm glad we brought that up before the camera came on. Um, I will say, pretending to this matchup, if there was one core in Counter Strike that I could have like get to like a resurgent level, I think it would be Crims JW and Flusha. I'm going to take that back immediately. I'm going to say it'd be Virtus Pro. It'd be Taz, Pasha, Ooh. and Neo. But currently active, still playing core, it'd be these three. Yeah, one that realistically will, yeah. could actually... That is in the realm of possibility. Yeah, I could uh, I could get behind that. It's, uh, I mean, that era of Counter-Strike when, when these guys were, um, you know, top of the world was super fun. And I, I, I agree. I just generally think we need Swedish Counter-Strike back in, in the, you know, in that conversation. Yeah, that would, uh, that really would be soon. good. That would be a good thing to have. These guys just play so much fun. I'm actually, I'm so excited to have Flusha back in the scene. I'm so glad he's back in the lineup. He, even even towards the end of his stretch, when you remember when he was playing in Cloud9, I thought he was excellent within that team. He had such an admirable performance with them in the, in the, in the Katowice Major and even leading up to it. Um, he's just a very, very cool player to watch. Yeah, he is. And honestly, I can't even think why. I mean, I... I felt a little bit justified, or a little bit vindicated, I guess, in uh, when they brought Golden back, because I had I, I tweeted back when they when they got rid of him that I think that might be a huge mistake. That there, there just aren't that many Swedish in-game dealers at all. If you, I mean, here's the thing. I'm surprised you haven't brought this up. If you ever want to have like real evidence that we do live in a simulation, it is the fact that Fnatic like has. Remember they, they like they, they had players who departed and went over to Godsent and then they brought them all back into Fnatic and then they you know had Golden and everyone come in they won a bunch of tournaments and they sent those guys off and now they've brought them back again. Yeah, it's so wild. it's just like Fnatic just keep rewinding the clock a little bit and going you know one step forward one step backwards just repeatedly. It is a crazy puzzle that they're trying to solve. Ooh, Hunter stepping on a grenade and he barely got the CC out in time. If they'd actually rushed him, maybe he would have been dead already. But it's a three man stack at the top of Banana for G2 and they're going to be playing on the CT side. Of course, Fnatic on the T side and. Jax with the early approach. It's great news that they see Jax right here. They're going to double nade him, and he goes very low, and Hunter is down as well. It's not good news at all. I was getting ready for a... <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for a nice little trap being set. The bomb is on the other side, even. It's worse news. Uh, Somehow dude, got worse. I mean, kind of. This is like one of those situations where the fake has almost worked too well. Thankfully, Kenny S and Amanek are rotating. Like, what happens if they had just decided to call the save immediately and stayed at the eight bomb site, and then they found the bomb? That would have been a uh, that would have been funny. It's not gonna happen. JW is going to end his round with a triple kill. He does go, he does die in the end. But Amanek, uh, nothing to do here. Not even at the correct bomb site. Yep. Fnatic have a, this is a convincing victory. Very much. I I don't even sure they know what's happening. They might only know when they watch the watch the demo back. Wait a minute, that was on A. <laughs> so, I mean, I I love the idea of the stack, and they got what they wanted, but they just couldn't handle it. 
Jax went down. Hunter, no CC damage at all. Yeah, a whole careful what you wish for type thing. Yeah, a little bit. Now they've bought a lot of smokes, and we all know what that means. They're going to be trying to stall for time. And it's going to be hard against Fnatic. I don't think a Fnatic are going to be a team that's going to be waiting around for a very long time here. No, their, their players are not shy in any sense in terms of challenging, in terms of applying pressure, especially when you have three SMGs on the board, or JW just doing that. Nice opening kill. And even Omenek is brought down low. That's over towards the B bomb site. Takes some nade damage to 14 health. Returns a little bit of it, but not nearly enough. Not nearly as much as he'd like. And there's one of the smokes already put out in the field of play at a minute and 30 seconds. So these smokes are not going to do enough to stall out time. That option is taken away from G2. Now you need something spectacular on an individual basis. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, then you would have to rotate the, the rest of the three smokes into B at, at different intervals. And let's be honest, that's just going to be very hard to do when they're all across the map. Instead, they mostly stack the A-bomb site. Nex is sort of slowly falling back, but um, I mean, why not? Have everybody here, maybe you can do some damage. Yes, I mean, the best case scenario, again, I mean, much like the pistol round, they have the stack in the proper place for the moment. Flusha is going back towards Banana. Crims is going to join up with them, and this actually looks like Fnatic is just going to outmaneuver them on the map. JW falling back with a bomb. So yeah, the stack is now uh, woefully out of place. Smoke's going down for the defensive side to try and prevent a mid to be split, but there's just no defense at the other bomb site. So this is just a matter of timing, and Flusher Crimson and JW aren't even going to wait. They're just going to go for it. They'll find an empty bomb site. Now, if you're if you're G2, just save. You know, you, you've lost this one. Call it a day. Get the utility. You can actually rebuy smokes in the next round. You can try it all over again. You could definitely do that, but it's true. I mean, uh, the D rules and the CCs, if nothing else, are going to be. <laughs> They're going to be fun to play around with in the upcoming round, so... Not the most excitement we were looking for in this round, but... Um, it's all good. You can't always get what you want. It's all good, baby. we got to play more rounds in Inferno. We do, and, of course, the best of three, and the loser goes home. The loser does go home. How do you feel... Uh, we're about to get this... Uh, ooh. Nice. Uh, a little bit of excitement there from Jax. Yeah. How do you feel about this whole... Uh, we get the, the JW Kenny S. That's been like a, a duel for the ages. Well, the thing is, I know for sure Kenny's going to be playing well. I feel like he's been he's yeah. been really solid lately. I I'm not a hundred. I think JW is just always going to be like a a good player. I'm just never sure if we're going to be seeing the same kind of mad JW level. I don't even think that that level of JW is is possible anymore. Well, no, it might be one of those things that's lost to history, like we talked about yesterday. Just the fact that everybody else has got to such a high level that you're going to have a hard time doing some of those things. That'd but be, I don't want to rule it out. Like I I don't know. What a cool piece of content that could be if someone's like well inclined to do a bunch of like uh, studious demo watching and is into video editing, going back and getting some of like the old, the old highlights of JW and Kenny S with the old op. That'd, oh, be, yeah. that'd be a really cool era to to revisit. Definitely, somebody should do that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think in in sort of straight all versus all, I I suspect Kenny's gonna come out on top in this particular game. But yeah. I don't know. I just feel like that isn't even going to be the main focus of JW for for a lot of it. So maybe it's not going to have the same impact that it would have had back in the day. That's fair. I, I would agree with that assessment as well. Golden and Flush are already starting to uh, peek in towards the speed bombs. They at least peer in deep. They see absolutely nothing. Golden with the Deagle out. Now the Mac-10 as he wants to get a tad bit more aggressive. Looking for any information. He's in front of that smoke, but he's going to back away now. JW with an opening kill towards the A bomb site, and Flush is going to grab one at B, and JW is going to keep pressing the issue, and he's got another. Nice work with the AK 47. Good trade from Brolin, and they can pick up that dropped rifle whenever the Mac 10s get into position, and the bomb's going to go down, and 3 to nothing for Fnatic with relative ease. Yeah, very smooth beginning here for the Swedish side. You really appreciate that kind of a thing. Just, uh, I mean, I, 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 the most of the desks, I think all of the desks sided with G2 in this game. Yeah. And I would probably be inclined to, to do something similar, but um, I, mm. you're not feeling that confident? No, I actually, I, well, I agree with, I agree with Kemp that it's, this matchup is kind of like 50-50, and I think most of what would probably sway people's opinions towards G2 would be some of the question marks around Golden and Flush coming back after some time away, but also the level that we saw Hunter and Nexa play with yesterday. Yeah, that was my thinking too. I they think that really might good. that might tilt things in the favor of G2, which is fair play. You can't really make an argument against that after what we saw out of them yesterday. Uh, that was that was a pretty crazy performance. The way it was that that first map of their series, the two of them combined for something like 47 or 48 kills or something crazy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and. 
I mean, they might also just be in that honeymoon period, right? Where it's, yeah. you just have such a good time. Everyone's kind of loving the mood of the team and nobody's not really arguing with each other yet. So you have to imagine both of these teams are going to be in some kind of, maybe not honeymoon period, but like just def definitely, you know, yeah, this but, is a project. Well, for Andy, it's more like a divorce that they're trying to repair again. <laughs> it's not quite the same, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, the second honeymoon's not as romantic as the first one. It's not the same, is it? Even if you tell yourself, it's probably not going to be exactly uh, the same feeling. But maybe it can work. I'm, I won't rule it out. I'm willing to be persuaded. I think it'd be interesting if it does. Ooh, Crims is really, really far up in those apartments over on the other side. Well, the rest of Fnatic are just kind of playing a, a, a more or less normal game. Three in B, and they're all defensive on G2. That's very interesting. You'd think if you're going to have three people here, you want to flash in for a retake at some point and get some information. They've got... Well, Kenny's the most forward player on the map right now. Yeah, we're seeing more and more of this. Three man staying for a long time towards that B bomb site. Even though brackets have been taken as well, no one budging from that B bomb site. I'm not sure if this is a hard read. Good shot from Kenny S. A late peek in towards Boiler. That was Crims, who was all the way at the end of Halls, and he fell away. Now Kenny S has got to rotate to the other side, but JW's already there. And this is the danger of only having two defenders here. No one was there to spot this part of the map. Now there's a lot of trouble for Jackson inside of that pit. 40 seconds on the clock, and I don't think he's going to be allowed to buy that much time either. He's got no grenades or anything. If they throw, well, they have no Molotovs, but if they had one, he couldn't even put it out. Now instead, probably going to be swarming him, and the closer they get to that graveyard, the closer they can just find another vertical angle to shoot at him from. Almost getting the kill, but that's not going to be quite good enough. A follow-up is pretty decent, and he still goes down with 20 seconds left here. So a two-on-three, a rough position here for G2. I mean, they have a lot of grenades. If they show up for an early kill, maybe they can justify it. But if it goes a little bit further, they really can't. That's a really cool round from Fnatic. As you mentioned, the passive defense. Fnatic did a great job of exploiting that, being patient. Now, strong positions to stop this retake. Two kits, they might be prompted to go forward, especially with some utility. This pit position, though, from Golden, it's so strong. And Nex is brought down low. He's going to fall all the way in Omenek. One versus two now. Opening kill onto JW, but he has no idea where the third player is, and he's already backing off. He wants nothing to do with the fight. Going to try and go save the AWP, you'd imagine, but Flush is already in position to stop him. Flush is going to make his way out a bit there. Doesn't want to get blown up by the bomb and Amanek. Oh, he goes with the bomb instead. That's rough. That's another round for Fnatic, and nothing saved there on the G2 side. And I've got to say, I think, I think this fight that Kenny takes, it's just the fire that's in front that makes that so hard for him to see what's going on. I like this one here. This is, I mean, remember, Fnatic at that point had no nades. And you know with 40 seconds left, that's you have to imagine someone's either in pit or the bomb site, and, and you just know that they're going to be feeling nervous, they're going to feel under a lot of pressure, and Hunter's going to be under a lot of pressure to try and help him out. They really lured them into that kind of a play and able to take complete advantage of it. Start pushing forward. Again, he was close with the CC, but he got taken down instead. I think partly through the wall there. And now, Golden flashed into a bit of an angle. Takes the fight with the Beagle. And that comes up way on top. Not really taking that much damage. And again, this isn't... Again, they're not really going all in. They're playing this really safely right now, Fnatic. It's, it's great to see. Safely, but but still aggressive. They're not overextending in any way, but they're not they're not shying away from fights. We've seen them very often. You know, remember Crims was at the end of halls at a minute and twenty in the previous round. Now we've seen them a couple times, even on even in the second round, just challenging in towards the B bomb site very early. You have to imagine that's going to be. I mean, if you think back, I mean, again, this is this is thinking back way way to the old Fnatic, I guess. But you know, this is a team that we've always talked about as has always loved taking fights. You know, they've always been yes. more than willing to take those one-on-one -on -one duels. And against a team like G2, that is a new lineup that hasn't quite had time to get together and kind of coordinate things. They're going to be presented with a lot of those opportunities throughout the series. Yeah, that's actually one of the, I think, one of the parts that's going to be interesting to follow just because... Oh, I thought they already spotted Kenny in that corner, but I guess they hadn't. A lot of damage for the smoke and a shot from Jax. He actually gets that one on Brolin as well. I can't believe it. Now it's a two-on-two. Two. Hard to really explain why. Good lineup there for Crimson. He'll save the day. That was that was that was too much action all in one second. Yeah, that got a little bit spicy. I was gonna say one of the fun things back, you know, back when when Fnatic had their era going on, that was so interesting was because you're right, they did do love taking fights, but it's almost like they had sort of a momentum that would build up where you know, if they suddenly won like even just sometimes one round, but one or two rounds that was they were close and they were sort of like 
you know, hard fought rounds, that would just inspire the whole team and everybody would get on board and then suddenly it would just roll back, you know, seven round deficit and win. It was, it was so much fun to watch. Uh, it really was. And don't let this conversation about like taking taking fights and taking duels and loving those one-on-one -on -one battles, you know, confuse you. This is a team that, that has always been able to work very well together. Like a big factor of Swedish Counter-Strike is it feels like individual, but they are very well coordinated. Yeah, sort of like um, on almost like an instinctual basis sometimes it looks like. I well, mean, we called it the Fnatic Hive Mind back in the day. Yeah, that we was that fun, wasn't it? Yeah. For that exact reason, 5-0 and now for the Swedes. It's a brilliant start for Fnatic on Inferno. So, I mean, G2, I don't even know. They had the passive defense when they had the rifle the last time. This time, they stack 4 at 8 and leave Kenny with the orb on one side. That, I can't really argue too much with that. Again, look at how willing Fnatic is to challenge. Even taking damage to the Molotovs because they were so aggressive in the choke points and they don't even want to give it up. They went right back to it. Brolin, opening kill. It's traded, but right back from Krims. Amanek with an off-angle. He turns. Golden is not prepared for that, but he still wins the fight. And now Nexa. He's getting wrapped upon and he just realized it, I think, a little bit late. There's the turn. Golden down low. They definitely have the information. Now and he's got a follow-up. Nexa holding on as well as you possibly could hope for. And JW not even going to be able to do it. What a hold, what a stand from Nexa. That is really huge, and it's kind of shocking that Fnatic weren't able to do more in that, in that sense. He did pivot really well to get that first fight. Now Flusher walking in, and he's going to be really careful. His legs could be showing at almost any moment, but falls down instead, makes a bit of noise, and I don't think he knows. Nexa's still on the bomb site. Now he definitely will know. That grenade gives it away. 38 seconds. And there's the shot. Baiting out the AWP shot as well. That's very smart from Flusher. And Kenny going to be walking up while the bomb's going down. That smoke though obscuring most of it. Kenny, he can't get it. And Flusher will win the one versus two. And that is a huge steal away after everything that Nexer had just done. That is a very, very aggressive take from Kenny S to try and win that one versus one. I would love to see it from his POV if that shot was close because he was trying to get in there before that bomb got planted. He was hoping by the time he had the angle, Flusher wouldn't be able to react and get away from the bomb plant and how close it must have been. I guess the smoke also that Flusher throws is a perfect counter to that. It really obscures the vision, just enough to provide some measure of safety. And G2 getting absolutely blanked. Zero to six. And they know what the economy is like. Picking up that one Mac 10 on JW. And he's really forward. And even just what we just saw, just forcing that smoke out early on. Those, those little things make a difference long term. Pushing up the middle as well. G2 trying to see if they could catch somebody. It looks like Crims. Wait. Looks like he had the right idea. They could still be just be trying to bait this one out, but now, yeah, they're not really checking in Amanek. Still going down, but there was a real chance. There was a little bit of a moment there. Crims is an opera, apparently. He's had some time off. Well, why not? Brushing up on his sniping abilities. Two players to defend, Kenny S and Hunter inside of the bomb site at A. Nexa rotating over as well with the Deagle. Utility gonna start being used, so Nexa should for the most part be neutralized and isolated. Although a gap in that smoke, that went deep in towards library, and it might not be as effective as they'd like. And you have to imagine it's gonna start fading pretty soon. He's got the angle right around the edge. This could actually be tough if they try and cross this. But look at the Molotov, they bank up into heaven and then pack down. Brolin peeking on the other side as Kenny was trying to escape the fire. And Hunter's gonna be shut down. Nice timing, nice grenade usage. Just everything is looking brilliant right now for the Swedes. 7 0 in their favor. And only 14 kills total on the G2 side, averaging two per round if your maths are not up to par. I like that, Moses. We should work more maths into the. <laughs> it's always a good idea, so I'm told. This yeah. is uh, not, not what we were expecting anyway. Not what anyone's expecting, not that what the desk was expecting. Probably not what G2 were expecting either. No, I, you have to imagine if you're a G2 player right now, these seven rounds have gone by so quick and you're, you're not even really sure what's, what's, what's hitting you. They are getting hip-checked off of this map very, very quickly. Yeah, it's looking really interesting. And I mean, they've been trying some rounds here where they do try and fight a little bit for Banana with some, you know, flashbangs from inside of the bomb side. This, I mean, this time and a couple of the last rounds, they just get absolutely shot down doing that. Look how much utility is left on the G2 side of things. There's been so much really aggressive plays from Fnatic early on in these rounds that they've used so many of the, so much of their utility to try and stop those kinds of attacks. 
And now they just don't have a whole lot to play with down the stretch. Even Krim's going to start getting cheeky. Wow. Seven to zero. He's feeling so confident. Oh, Kenny missing a shot, but now Krim's wondering if he's going to try and catch him falling back. He's got Jax there with him as well, but they're about one flashbang away from both being dead, and that's that's all it takes at this point. Smoke and Jax turning for it. Actually, a smoke could help them a lot. He's going to pick up a kill. A lot of spray coming through, and Kenny will help him out a little bit in taking out Crims. That's not bad at all, but look who's here in the rotations. Vasha, oh, did he get baited by that? No, he's not quite committed to it. He could have tried to run through that, and that would have been a big mistake. 20 seconds now, Hunter. Good turnaround for him now. He's still on the bomb side, defending 18 seconds. He needs to get one more kill here, and he will. A headshot, and now it's JW left with 13 seconds. And backup is coming in quick. JW also dropping low on health, and he's going to lose it. Hunter with a beautiful defense, a triple kill, and G2 pick up their first round. Yeah, they got that. Was uh, That's a good recovery. I mean, that's a good stop from G2, but they got they got a little bit fortunate a couple times. The decision from Hunter to go back into the B bomb side. Flusha never realized he went back. Hunter just realized the danger at the right moment because Flusha was gathering intel that smoke in front of boiler like crims could have got both those kills it feels in lane for for a number of seconds until that smoke goes up a little bit of help coming from the fanatic side with a miscue on that smoke but regardless still a long way to go to get back into this game seven to one for the offense on inferno that is not a great scoreline going into round nine it's definitely not understatement of the year that's a whole john madden type thing i just did you know what? It's fine. I, I think um, I think that's good. Maybe you could have a career in the future as some sort of, you know, press PR person, you know? Just writing Yeah. Writing up headlines for the team. <laughs> it's not it's not great, but it could be much worse. Yeah. Well it could be one round worse. Yeah, well, that's that's a hundred percent of the rounds they have, Jason. <laughs> so There we are, math. We're really improving very quickly. They have picked up uh, two AWPs. I guess that's good news, but you can also see they, they only won that round with two people alive, and that obviously has an impact. That Molotov, that does a lot of damage, and it forces Nexa to have a fight on his own as well. Good counter grenade coming out, and Jax is also boosted. There's still a pretty big crossway, uh, crossfire going on in the middle here. That could get interesting. 40 seconds now. Oh, have they called a gamble? And it's going to work. Oh, this is actually brilliant from G2. Almanac, though, he's looking for one pick, and he's got it. That's massive, and he's going to get a second. A follow-up as Flusher was baited into that peak, and Almanac might even be able to do more. His teammates aren't even here yet. He's done so much work to boost up Hunter. He gets blind at the last second, and Kenny S has this angle. No bomb plan this time. Kenny trying for a very quick shot there, but not able to complete it. The bomb will go down, and it's a two on three, and they are not out of the woods yet. G2, that's a shot and a half from Crims, taking down Hunter. He was trying to get a little bit too aggressive there. The grenade around the corner does nothing at all to Jax, but Crims, he's still got the lineup, and he is such a solid player. You want to be careful about this. Jax, though, will beat him to it, and now Golden sneaking in, getting one and turning around. He's ready for more. He just needs one bullet for the headshot, and there it is. Jax goes down, Golden with a double, and Fnatic with a crushing win in that round. Oh, that's got to be so crushing if you're G2. Not only the, the pretty harsh reset of the economy, or not, not full reset, they obviously had a losing bonus built up, I guess. Yeah. Not even a reset at all, technically. They just don't have a great amount of money. But I mean, still, you call for the stack at the B site, and again, it's the correct call. That's maybe, I think, the third time that we've seen G2 actually call for the correct rotation, the correct stack at the bomb site, and not be able to convert it. Happened on the Pistron, it happened on, I think, like maybe one of the first or second gun round. Good nade stack. Does nice damage onto Golden. Yeah, it sucks if you're right and you still lose. That's that that does. It's a like a really bad feeling. Yeah, because it's like, where do you go with that even? So well, we made the right call. Amanek even had a brilliant opening to that defense. You you think that's it? Yeah, you had everything. You had Amanek with the what was it double kill to start things out. You had two more players rotating over to shore up that defense. And you called for that rotation so early. They were there with plenty of time. Fnatic is up mid, but they don't have the bomb. It might not matter as Fnatic going up against just pistols, but I, I think you have to be a little worried if you're Fnatic and you're able to have this much freedom to peek towards pit. Maybe not worried, but you have to be. You're going to be cautious. You're going to be on alert. Yeah, and Flush is kind of checking out the B bomb side a bit as well. A bit of a find happening there. Jack's taking a lot of damage. Roland JW walking around the other side. Good return from JW. It's kind of important, and he's going to follow it up. He's having himself a very good game at the moment, and 
finally goes down, but now Crims is coming in and locked in the corner is Nexter with no escape. Crims playing that one so carefully as well, not even really risking any fight at all. And Amanek in a one versus three. What was it Trey said at the start of this, uh, throwing over, or when he, when he made his prediction for G2, he said Fnatic was like all W and not enough mouse one. I think they've got, they've, they've figured it out. They've combined both of them in this game. Good. Very uh, aggressive across the map very quickly and hitting some stellar shots. Yeah, I think it's, it's been working out wonderfully for them. And G2 don't, I, they don't seem to have an answer, right? They're giving up that mid control, which means they lose any intel about what's happening on the map. And the same is true for Top Banana. So top of banana. And that, at that point, you really, I don't know, you, you have to get, I don't know if Lucky's the right word, you have to really trust that you're getting one of those opening kills in, in any take on a bomb side, right? Or you're going to be in, a, in just a lot of trouble. They stayed the AK on Amanek at least, but it's 9-1 to one in favor of Fnatic, with JW um, clocking in at 14 kills. That's good. Not too shabby like at all. I like to see that. Timeout from G2 is called as they want to talk things over. Plenty of money. And I think this is where maybe if you're G2 at this point, loosen things up. Maybe go to just like a pug style. Unleash Kenny. Say, listen, the teamwork stuff that we've been trying isn't, isn't really working. And you're probably trying to incorporate elements of it so that you're not like going into practice after this with no idea what's happening. But maybe just try and get you know the, the rounds on the board. You have four rounds left in this half. You know what? Or five, I should say. Well, I mean, I can't even... You could you could make that argument, but it just as a team that feels like such a letdown, doesn't it? You're like, you know what, all the plans throw them all out the window. No, but we had the conversation about the honeymoon period with Fnatic. Um, G2 obviously not not feeling any kind of honeymoon at the moment, but like you also there's there's not a whole lot of pressure, right? Like no one's going to be blowing up. You know, they they remember these guys just joined the team on day one. Yeah, that's true. You frame it like that, we can cut. We can give them a little bit of a break, I guess. <laughs> And actually, maybe that even lends more credibility to your idea of not trying to fit everything into a system that's one day old. Yeah. It's like, that might be difficult. That, in some ways, like applies more, more pressure than is needed to try and make things work immediately. Smoke misses, so Kenny has to have a chance. There's a massive gap in that. Jax with an opening kill. It's on Crims, who... I mean, ooh, nice nade kill from Mamadek. He had the dink as well beforehand. I think Crims was getting queued on that balcony again with that sort of a peek over the smoke. This time gets punished. Now, surely, Anders, surely, G2 does not lose this round. Well, Golden was trying to think just the smoke fades. He wanted to sort of just slink through and that didn't really work out. So yeah, I'm going to say this is looking too solid at the moment. Good pre-fire and Kenny walks into it. Amanek burning in the corner and he's almost down. But, oh, there goes Kenny. I don't know. No. They get this kill easily. There's the chance, isn't there? And they're going to take Amanek down 30 seconds. Now, G2. We should all try and get here before they do anything crazy. A three on two retake. They have every shot of doing this. They have a Molotov with that dark corner where someone's holding right now. And Brolan maybe could get rid of him or even JW with the right grenade. He's thinking about it. There's the Molotov landing in. JW forced out into the fire and he is immediately gone. Now it's all on Brolan. No more Molotovs, but they line up for him, and that is actually a little bit scary. But they'll be fine. They pick up the kits and the following at the, that the AWG, and it's a second round for G2. Okay, we've got the hands back. Oh yeah, he was great yesterday with this. Obviously going to be very, uh, very communicative with the new members. And everyone, apparently. It's, I'm, I'm just very excited about this. It's, like, it's mesmerizing, isn't it? I want to know what they mean. You I, do see people sometimes talking a lot with their hands, but usually it's like... Yanko's a big hand talker. Yeah, well, Yanko's the, I think, another exception. But usually it doesn't look that powerful if people do it. It sort of looks like they're flailing around, but... I feel like Malik's got it down, Yanko's got it down. Brolin's burning. It's not great. He's got nothing down. Hunter walks right into the nade smoke. I don't even think he saw JW. I'm going to be honest, I don't know how JW saw him either, but that's fair play. Radar? Radar, perhaps? I feel like it, that makes the most sense. But I agree. Four and four flash for the setup here. Nexa. Ooh, actually a little bit further away from the corner. And they are in front of him, just inside of the smoke. So this is very awkward now. Amanek throwing a grenade in the turn here. JW 
Actually, Nexus still gets away. I thought maybe there would be a return of some kind here, but they're back at the B bomb site instead. And walking into it is Kenny, and that's a huge kill flusher. He was doing this in the previous round, lurking outside. Now Crims, he hears them running in the middle. Timing, gonna be able to catch that kill, no problem. And that is unbelievably annoying if you're G2. This is what we talk about with the Swedish hive mind. I mean, you look at some of these battles and they have all just been one-on-ones, but as soon as one member of the defense falls, like the Fnatic players just have such a good game sense of knowing when it's their time to pause and wait for the flank and wait for their time to pounce, as Crims just did out of Boiler. And it's just such a frustrating experience as a defender. Because there's pressure all along the map and you never know. It's like a horror movie. You just never know where there's going to be some Swedish Counter-Strike player just popping out of a doorway. It's not fun, right? Because they're also <laughs> they're also quick with the shots and just individually. Yeah, they're not lacking of skill in any way. No, it's. I mean, you see, you see, Flush has been lurking outside of the B bomb side, looking for that opening, and some of the time they just use it, you know, to to keep someone there or get a bit of intel. And this time, yeah, he opens up the bomb side late in the round, even. And they're not afraid. Like I think at other times, someone, you know, that that kill that Flush gets onto Kenny S. I think people would be maybe a little bit scared to kind of stand in the open like that as that smoke fades and that B choke point. But Flush is just like, screw it. Now maybe heard some footsteps of Kenny running away, so he knew if he was coming back exactly who he was going to be rotating to. We didn't catch that kind of intel. But regardless, G2 is uh, getting uh, their bruise at the moment. Early peek down mid, and JW almost found another entry. Yeah, he was very ready for that kind of play. 10 to 2, 13th round. What a beginning. For Fnatic, as you said, they've been trying to move the puzzle pieces around for a long time in this team to, to sort of reignite the magic, find find that formula that, that was working in the past. Well, at least in this matchup, it's it's reignited. It's working very, very well. This is a much slower paced round and a much more passive defense as well. Nexa is going to be primed with a flashbang towards that B bomb site. Amanek going to be the one calling out information, calling out a footstep for the bomb flash. Meanwhile, Fnatic takes mid. No one's going to be here to challenge. They have lost this fight so many times, just want nothing to do with it. They really don't hunt up. Could someone set up a grenade for him? It's going to have to be quick. They're getting to the corner now. And that little jump up from Golden, I actually think Hunter got fairly confused. Aminek goes down next. And that is all the way to the middle of Banana. Now it's a 5 versus 3 with 27 seconds left. And they're just wrapping this bomb side. They could have gone back to B probably and done fine, but instead they just continue. 20 seconds here in library as well. Next has shown up, but he's gonna have to join this fight very soon, or Jax probably will get overrun eventually. A little bit of a flashbang to try and buy some time. The bomb is down. This is a strange end to the round, and patient play for Crims will get the kill on Nexa. That leaves Jax in the pit, and normally this is the position you love to be in, but this not not when the bomb is down and you can't get out. And not when all your teammates have been just d deleted from the map. He's the only one remaining. Just slowly but surely, everyone rotating over to help. Anyone who could provide support is just dropped, and Fnatic just largely had to ignore pit, not even worry about it, just take everyone else out. We saw just now Hunter has dualies. Um, he switched away from it. I take it all back. I was going to say, that's probably the recipe that could get him back into this. He bought the dualies and dropped the most. Do you need any more evidence that these pistols don't work? Listen, I'm just saying, I think that would have been... That's what they've been missing this whole half. Crims, <laughs> again, just no fear. All the way up mid, he's even got that through the smoke. Hunter's going to be frustrated. Saw the trajectory of the nade. The auto shotgun is coming down to boiler, but Crims has already backed off to the B bomb side. We go. No one actually in the site. Good kill from Nexa. Better trade from Flusha. And Fnatic's going to be able to get in and get this bomb planted. Hunter, got to be careful about shooting through the smoke like that. Pretty decent grenade. The follow-up from Emanek could have been good, but let's be honest, they are kind of fighting a losing battle here. Three versus four in round number 14. I don't even know... I don't even know what success looks like in a round like this if you're a G2. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, it doesn't matter if they get any guns at the exit. They, there's no economic damage that you can really speak of. That's going to be fine no matter what. And G2 is going to have the full losing bonus, so... Yeah, it's not going to matter if they save these weapons anyways. They're going to have a very strong buy no matter what happens. So... 
Yeah. There, I guess there is no winning in this round. That's what Fnatic has done to them. No victory even possible. It's pretty brutal, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm a bit, I'm a bit stunned. Flabbergasted. Shocked. A lot of different synonyms going on here. Yeah, that's all I got. I ran out. I thought I could do two more. I feel like this is great. Like, if, if Fnatic can make it through, if they can join us in the arena in front of the Swedish crowd, I think that would be great news um, all across the board. So... Speaking of beauty as well, and uh, NIP, I believe, still, still fighting for a spot as well. There is also that. Golden going down, so that's an early fight being won from G2. A little bit aggressive. Ooh. Not the best grenade. Oh, yeah, NIP fighting on the uh, the B stream, the alternate stream, casted by uh, Vince and Dust Moret. NIP versus Greyhound. Also definitely worth tuning into. Open two tabs in your browser and follow them both. Four versus five at the moment. Kenny, right angle, right time, and JW crouching into that fight. Hunter on the other side. And um, Nexor is holding top banana here against Flusher, and he's still going to lose that fight. That's annoying. It's now two on five. Oh, he's turned around for it. If he got that kill, that would have been that would have been interesting. Now instead, I, I don't know. I think they needed to either get that kill or be quick in B, and they've done neither. This is a cool pop flash, though. It's a perfect pop flash. Flusher goes down, no chance for a bottle, and even Crims is getting flanked out from Halls, and he just saw his death coming at the last second. 12 to 3 in the favor of the Swedish side of Fnatic, and we've got Frankie ready at halftime. We do indeed, and if I were G2, I would be hugging my chicken mascot, Pascal, and praying for a miracle in that second half. Supreme focus from both of these teams. No whooping, no coyote yells over here. Just supreme focus in this first map. Can G2 pull off a miracle in that second half? We'll soon find out. That has put me in such a strange mood. <laughs> Can feel it in your plums. I don't even know. I, I don't know. I'm sure I had something I wanted to say to welcome you guys back, but I just it wiped my memory from just even watching that in slow motion. Slow motion, Kenny smile. Yeah, that was it. That's 12 right. to 2, 3 though. Scoreline here at the beginning of the second half. That's, that's going to be hard to come back from. It really is. And this is where we get to repeat that classic line. The pistol round is going to be very important. Yeah. I'd, although even now you sort of almost feel like you don't even believe that anymore because of the the economy system, right? There was a time where you know you win the pistol, you definitely win the next two rounds. I mean, or, or almost certainly do, and you got you got like a good good bounce back. Now it's like yeah, maybe, but yeah, especially on further strengths on both sides, right? The CTs can try the the smoke stall out tactic, which can be very effective, and the Ts can try the uh, the creek drop tactic. They're going to be smoking off. Golden or Flusher, but if it's Golden, I'm wondering if he's just going to try and line up the shot next to the wall. But the USP, that's so doable. So, yeah, there's the smoke, and let's see if he's going to try and do it. All he has to do is find the right angle. Not quite happening. Oh, no! The timing on Flusher. Getting next to kill. That's annoying, because otherwise that would have been a great trade. He's back, boys. Here he is, trying to spam the bomb as well. Not going to find that one, and Fl or Fnatic is going to take their time with this because the flank is coming in. Flush is going to be under pressure. Oh, he just gets around the corner. They're going to continue this. This will make the flank so much more powerful, though. That's three players now behind Coffins, and the flank is going to be able to stop this. JW on the defuse, and they can't get around it in time, and they're desperately... Kenny stops it, a one-on-one. -on -one. He's back around the corner, goes for the fight for the Glock. He should have this. And the burst fire comes up. A quad kill on Kenny. That is very, very close. They almost just over peaked to try and stop that defuse. And I don't know, that would have probably cost them the map immediately. But they still hang in there. Oh, wow. This is. He's actually standing still just to get that kill. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he kind of he just had to go for it at that point, right? If he runs out of bullets and doesn't get that frag, the, the round is lost. But that flank, the, the play that, that G2 makes puts them out of position entirely to stop that flank. What a round from Kenny S. Four kills for him. And four rounds for G2. And now it's Fnatic who get to try the stall out tactics. Everyone's got a smoke. Two Molotovs on top of that as well. 
you've got format 10, so surely you're not going to be playing so slowly that you don't force out some of these smokes. Otherwise, what is the point of getting the max 10s to begin with, right? Like, mobility is, is like half the power of that weapon, so... Well, they're certainly not applying the same amount of pressure or no. aggression as, as Fnatic were. And that, that should make you worried. That's an interesting smoke just to use there by Fnatic. Brolin uses his smoke at the end of A-Halls. Well, I guess he's never going to be able to throw it down at B, which is probably the main the main point of interest if, you are, if you're going to be running this smoke strategy. But still, over on the B-bomb side, Flusher and Golden are uh, hanging out, and they, well, they have a Molotov and actually two Molotovs yeah. on the smoke. So if this reverts into a B-strat for G2, which it still could, that would be bad. Well, I was going to say that's unfortunate that there's no Molotov over at the A-bomb side. Crims is going to find so much more information than he'd like to. Turn for a flashbang. There's his teammate. He's got one. Oh, my God. He got two. That's perfect. That is damage that G2 could not afford to take in this scenario. It does reveal to them someone's going to be in pit, so they definitely know that. But only 18 seconds left now, and they need to turn this corner and get that bomb hunt down right now. They're going to be in a lot of trouble. They may already be in trouble. The Molotov comes in from the B-bomb side. Flusher showing up with a big double. And CC and Hunter inside of the fire. Flusher to save the day. A triple kill and an absolute save. He'd rotated out of V, still holding onto that Molotov yeah. with 16 seconds left. And I, I, I just want to say that that round does look a little bit silly from G2, mostly because of this flusher rotation, this double kill with CZ. What? He's a freak, isn't he? He He's, really is. That's so, so crazy to watch. Those are rounds that are getting cleaned up by G2. That We're not going to see that same kind of style come out of G2 once this team gets some time together. So if you're a G2 fan, don't overreact to the horror that you just witnessed. Nice drive-by from Jax. Running and gunning. Works pretty well with that CC still. We'll try and be thinking about it at least. Flusher, looks like it's gonna be a pretty decent grenade next up. Trying to return some fire, but now some backups here as well. Crims has shown up. And I agree, this, th that's, that's the sort of mistake that right. you can correct, right? You go back and look at them and think, yeah, we'd actually force nothing out. Same thing with some of the miscues and some of the disorganization we saw on the CT side and their inability to kind of figure out how to stop that fanatic attack. That'll get cleaned up as well. But for the time being, let's all just sit back and enjoy the mouse lifting of Flusha. That was good, wasn't it? We've missed it. The shunt through the smoke, the... the I don't even know how he gets the recovery on the CC at that point in time, because the first kill actually takes like, most of the bullets, and he's backing off, and he's just like, yeah, headshot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's very good at this game, isn't he? JW and Brolin crossfire in pit. Brolin going to take the first aggression. They jump down. They don't even know. <laughs> 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 That's uh, Why does it all work out so perfectly for them? Uh, I'm so happy. I, so is Golden. I could. I didn't even know how to cast that. It's not even possible, <laughs> is it? Oh, this is funny. Just enjoyed this. <laughs> Thank you. Oh man. Yeah, they. I don't know. We, we could. We could. We could spin that too. Kenny just trying to save his teammate. And bro, check the corner. <laughs> Late I'll save my you, life. Mr. President. Yeah. Oh man. Now they're back to Glocks and the P250 here. And it's 14 to 4. Not I the place you want to be in? Not unless you're really, really looking forward to playing Train. Uh, was it Train? What's the second map? I, I believe it is Train. Th it is important to note as well. This is this is Fanatic's pick. Yes, Train is the next one. Okay. However, what worries me about that is if, you know, we saw the kind of disorganization on the CT side in the first half on Inferno. Train takes a lot of communication and a lot of coordination as well. Yeah, it does. And they're going to be starting on the T side. Oh no. Oh no. The Glocks are here. That's, that's, that's an incredible grenade out of Flusher and the spray as well. Saving Golden. Actually didn't. Kenny still <laughs> managed to do it. The but down he could field. have. That was Golden's fault. Flusher tried his absolute best to get him back in the armored vehicle and just try to drive him out of there. And Golden's still yelling at people out the window. And it's like Flusher was playing the VIP mode. Yeah. He's like, nah, bro, you're, you're good. Just get just get back. Please. Actually, that was the, I, I do wish they'd bring the VIP mode back, but the frustrating thing is if, if your VIP was someone who's an idiot, which did happen like about 85% of the time. Oh my god, it happened all the time. It was, it was real rough. But that um, was one of the more fun game modes Counter-Strike had. Oil Rig? Yeah. So much fun on that. That should be a show match, tournament organizers. We could uh, 
we could find a way to set that up, I'm sure. Well, it's 15 to 4. Flusher falling back, but this time Golden is the one saving them. What a, what a great friendship they've got going on over here. Oof, that's brutal. Jax trying to take advantage, trying to get down halls very quickly, and Crims was doing that all in the first half, so he knows exactly how the game is played. And a 5 on 2. This has uh, turned out to be a very quick map. I don't see a way back into this round if you are if you are Nexa and Kenny S. Split for the moment. Nexa is giving Kenny plenty of times towards middle to maybe try and find a pick, but Fnatic at this point, they could even send Crims on like a, in a hunting mission with his MAC-10, but they can just sit very far back and, and just hang out and just chill. We almost, just, I mean, at this point, you just have to assume that you two are, are saying a little bit what you were saying, which is, you know what, it's not on my pick. It'll, it'll be fine on, on the second map. I don't think there's much else to, to really try and discuss. I would say a bunch of the mistakes they've made G2 in this map are fixable and, and can be can be recovered, but um, not going to be in this particular game, obviously. Flusher could be going down, and in fact will be going down. Golden now also a little bit soft enough. He's still going to be able to kill, quickly falling back, and that's a 16-4 to 4 victory for the Swedish team here at DreamHack Masters in Malmö, and what a, what a fantastic way to win map number one in the series. No, it, it, I mean, it's a great way if you're a fanatic. And if you're G2, actually, I think you, you can still just, I mean, we, we mentioned it. I don't, it's no kind of like, the scoreline isn't great, obviously. It doesn't feel good as the player, but it's no disaster for this lineup, right? It's still just no. so early. Like, this is stuff that you just brush off. You'll have to talk it over, use it as a learning experience. And I think, well, you know, you can't judge them on this performance. But no. obviously, we love seeing fanatic like this. It's that's good news. I hope they continue with this particular form, and, um, and maybe we'll get some more of that on map number two. Uh, we've got the analyst with us now, so how do you guys enjoy that uh, that beatdown? I just want to say first and foremost, thank you, Thing One and Thing Two. I really do appreciate <laughs> what you guys have done there with the hoodies. It's a good look for you guys, and not a good look for G2 as we close out that first map. Fnatic swiftly running over Gamers Two on Inferno. That was uh, that was a rough run. There was nothing really working out for G2 in this one. I think it's. I think Jason said it well, you know, you need uh, coordination, you need communication in order to be uh, a functional team on the CT side of Inferno, and they had neither of that going on in, in this game. Maybe a little bit to be expected, maybe the, the game against Astralis yesterday was the outlier, and today we're seeing the real, you know, G2. I think that's more the case. It, it would be ridiculous to expect them to be competitive, given the fact that they don't really know the spots, they don't really know how to communicate. It's a team that used to speak in French, now they're speaking English. There's so much stuff going on with them that came so early in, in this journey that it would be a little bit too much to expect them to, to be fully competitive. But that being said, Fnatic is playing well. So much stuff indeed, and speaking a little bit more about that communication, in this day and age, I mean, I think skill and mechanics is almost a given, and a lot of these players, they base their success off of the information given to them by their teammates. So it's a really good point indeed that this G2 lineup going into that international team uh, coming into this tournament kind of blind, it, it's definitely got to be challenging. I mean, they've got a, I mean, they've got a little bit of a learning curve, right? Sure. And that's going to happen. That's a, a natural learning curve between, you know, obviously what's a language barrier and protocols and all the things that Counter-Strike will bring into the fold. But my goodness, when JW's just bebopping around Inferno doing whatever he wants, that's not going to help your cause now, is it? No, and, and we talked about him coming into this game as well. He's actually had a, a quite a, a, an impressive tournament so far. He was good in the first game against Enz, which Fnatic ended up losing quite convincingly, 16-7. to 7. He was decent yesterday against Tai Lu, and today, as we talked about pregame-wise, he is a guy that thrives well when everything is in chaos. And this was one of those games where G2, they tried to make it messy, but Fnatic answered back by simply just killing them and, and playing. There I say, you know, some, some quite solid Counter-Strike, which we haven't seen from Fnatic in quite some time. Let's talk about Fnatic and G2 on the next map of this series. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we might as well talk a little bit about the train yard. Yeah, you know, I think Jason makes a good point. At, at a certain point on that Inferno matchup, G2's got to be thinking to themselves about that next step, going into that next match, trying to keep a positive mind. And I got to say, for a new lineup, a newer team with less pressure, no expectations, that's got to be a little bit easier, right? So going into this train matchup, I think they can come in a little bit more refreshed and, and have a little bit more of a competitive edge. But I am starting to doubt it a little bit and thinking maybe yesterday was an outlier. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we did call it a 50-50 game. We, we did expect, you know, it could go up in the air. We, and that's the thing, right? We don't really know where to put G2 as of yet. I think for the future, nobody can doubt, nobody can neglect the fact that Nexa and the guys is probably going to have a bright future. That, there's a lot of, you know, young prospects in that lineup. There's a lot of potential. But for now, in this game against Fnatic, moving into train, they're also going to start on the T side. There's a lot right now that speaks against them making this comeback. So if I were to put my money anywhere, 
potentially on GG Bet, I would probably put them on Fnatic. Nice. Yeah, GG.Bet, one of the official partners here of the Corsair DreamHack Masters, as well as Monster Energy, eSport-Management.com, CS.Money, and of course, myself, Tracer Anthes, because coming after the break will be the next map of the series, the second one, the second installment of G2 versus Fnatic. It will be Train on the cards. Fnatic have a very, very, very upper hand right now as we look forward into the series. So make sure you come back with us after the break.